This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emerly Waller. On today's Global, Russia uses its annual Victory Day parade to justify its war in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin tries to tie the war in Ukraine to the fight against Nazi Germany and accuses NATO of being a threat to Russia. NATO began active military development of the territories adjacent to ours. This was an absolutely unacceptable threat, systematically created for us and right on our borders. On the ground in Ukraine, the struggle for the Donbass region shows the slow pace of any Russian advance. The Russians have been pounding these frontline positions for weeks now, but the big picture here in the Donbass is that the Kremlin's offensive has largely stalled. And I'm pleased to set in Dnipro in central eastern Ukraine on a day when Ukraine's President Zelensky marks the May 9th anniversary by comparing Russia's war with that of Nazi Germany. Also on today's programme. As violence grips the Sri Lankan capital, the Prime Minister resigns. Will that be enough to end the protests? And could this man, the son of Ferdinand Marcos, become the next president of the Philippines? Hello and welcome to BBC News. Before we go to Ukraine, uh, we're waiting to hear from the leader of the British opposition, uh, Sir Keir Starmer, after Durham Police reopened an investigation into whether he broke lockdown rules last year. I want to show you the live pictures from Labour Party headquarters. Now let's turn to Ukraine because Vladimir Putin has said Russian forces in Ukraine were fighting for the future of their motherland in his annual address marking victory over Nazi Germany in the Second World War. He said the invasion of Ukraine was necessary and had been provoked by the West. But he didn't make any major announcements related to the war or list any sort of victories. Ukraine's president says Moscow is reenacting the crimes of the Nazis. Uh, well, let's head uh, to Dnipro and let's head uh, to our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette. Lise. Yes, and you join us in central eastern Ukraine in Dnipro, which is turning into a logistics and humanitarian hub as refugees continue to flee Russia's growing onslaught in eastern Ukraine. And I'm so thank you very much uh, for joining us. And as you emphasize, yes, these are really crucial tools for to help us try to understand this crucial war of this time. Well, we'll continue our special coverage, not just here from Dnipro, but with our correspondents across Ukraine. But for now, I'll hand you back to the studio in London. Lise, thanks very much. Let's return straight away to British politics. That statement from the Labour Party leader, Sir Keir Starmer, in the last few minutes, saying he would resign if police decided to fine him over an alleged breach of COVID-19 rules, stressing, though, he had followed the law at all times, going on to say, I don't believe those accusing me believe it themselves. I think they're trying to make the public believe that all politicians are the same. He was speaking in the last few minutes. Let's have a listen. Now let's turn to Sri Lanka because uh, the Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has resigned after coming under increasing pressure from widespread anti-government protests because of a deepening economic crisis. Uh, earlier in the day, police announced an overnight curfew following violent clashes between pro and anti-government supporters. Reports say an MP from the governing party was killed after he opened fire on protesters blocking his car outside of the capital. Let's speak to Shanak Yain Razaman can a member of parliament for the opposition tamil national alliance thank you so much for joining us here on bbc news your reaction first of all to the prime minister's resignation well as you say the situation is so fluid there on the ground thank you so much for speaking to us uh, on bbc news and uh, do stay with us because uh, here in the next few minutes we'll be getting more on the economic uh, crisis going on currently in sri lanka but thank you for your time thank you very much well, you're watching BBC World News with Matthew Amrelli Waller. On today's global programme, Russia uses its annual Victory Day parade to justify its war in Ukraine. <laughs> Vladimir Putin tries to tie the war in Ukraine to the fight against Nazi Germany and accuses NATO of being a threat to Russia. 
блок НАТО начал активное военное освоение. НАТО began active military development of the territories adjacent to ours. This was an absolutely unacceptable threat, systematically created for us and right on our borders. On the ground in Ukraine, the struggle for the Donbass region shows the slow pace of any Russian advance. In Ukraine, President Zelensky marked the anniversary by comparing Vladimir Putin's war to that of the Nazis. We'll get analysis from our World Affairs editor, John Simpson, here in a moment or two. Also on today's programme. We'll be back live in Sri Lanka, in the capital, as the Prime Minister resigns amid violent economic protests. And could this man, the son of the former dictator Ferdinand Marcos, become the next president of the Philippines? Welcome back to today's Global. Now, Russia's President Vladimir Putin said Russian forces in Ukraine were fighting for the future of their motherland in his annual address, marking victory over Nazi Germany in the Second World War. Well, as always, let's take stock with our World Affairs editor, John Simpson, who's here in the studio with me. Uh, John, your analysis uh, of what we heard today from Vladimir Putin. Well, like so many of these kind of things, I think it was what wasn't said and what didn't happen that was more important than actually what was said. That was a fairly bland, um, or does he feel obliged to just keep on day after day? John Simpson, uh, thanks very much. Uh, and we'll talk again at the same time tomorrow. Thanks very much, though, for today. And uh, as John was talking about uh, the fighting going on away from the cameras, the South, we know so much about uh, Mariupol. Interesting that uh, Ukraine said a little earlier that uh, they want the UN Human Rights Council to hold a special session on Ukraine in Geneva, uh, surrounding, of course, uh, human rights and all those allegations of war crimes. So Ukraine again pressing the UN Human Rights Council to hold a special session on Ukraine in Geneva. Well, more on all of that here in a moment or two. Uh, let us pause, though. Let's catch up with the business news, and that's with time. What do you have for us? Matthew, thank you very much. We're going to take you back to Sri Lanka, which, as we've already been reporting, is in the midst of a political and economic crisis. The Prime Minister has quit in the face of widespread anti-government protests. And after warning last week, a warning from the Finance Ministry that its foreign currency reserves were dangerously low at just $50 million today, we've learned that China's Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank is considering a $100 million loan of emergency support. That's it for me. Back to you now, Matthew. Tag, thanks very much. Thank you. Now, do stay with us because still to come here on the program, could this man, the son of the former dictator Ferdinand Marcos, become the next president of the Philippines? Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Our main stories here at Moscow's Victory Day Parade. President Putin tries to justify his invasion of Ukraine and accuses NATO of being a threat to Russia. In Sri Lanka, police now say that five people have died in violence today as the Prime Minister also has resigned. Now let's turn to the Philippines because millions of voters in the Philippines have been to the polls to decide who will become the country's next president. Local media is reporting that Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is leading in the presidential race according to unofficial polling. Let's return to Ukraine and central Ukraine. The city of Dnipro has become a vital hub in this ongoing war. Aid supplies from the west are pouring in to help those in need as refugees from the east of Ukraine are travelling in the opposite direction in search of safety. And as locals try to go about their daily lives. Recent missile strikes are a constant reminder that the war is never far away. Our chief international correspondent, Lisa Doucette, has sent this from Dnipro. Well, that was Lisa with her report. We'll join her live uh, back on the programme for all the very latest here in just a moment or two. See you in a bit. Live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News.
This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrelli Waller. On today's Global, Russia uses its annual Victory Day parade to justify its war in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin tries to tie the war in Ukraine to the fight against Nazi Germany and accuses NATO of being a threat to Russia. NATO began active military development of the territories adjacent to ours. This was an absolutely unacceptable threat, systematically created for us and right on our borders. On the ground in Ukraine, the struggle for the Donbass region shows the slow pace of any Russian advance. The Russians have been pounding these frontline positions for weeks now, but the big picture here in the Donbass is that the Kremlin's offensive has largely stalled. And I'm Lisa Doucette in Dnipro in central eastern Ukraine. On a day when Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky marks Victory Day by comparing Russia's actions to that of Nazi Germany. Also on today's programme, the leader of Britain's main opposition Labour Party, Sir Keir Starmer, says he will resign if he is fined for breaking Covid rules over a party attended during lockdown. If the police decide to issue me with a fixed penalty notice, I would, of course, do the right thing and step down. And as violence grips the Sri Lankan capital, the Prime Minister resigns. Will that be enough to end the protests? Welcome back to BBC News. Vladimir Putin has said Russian forces in Ukraine were fighting for the future of their motherland in his annual address, marking victory over Nazi Germany in the Second World War. He said the invasion of Ukraine was necessary and had been provoked by the West. But he didn't make any major announcements related to the war or list any sort of victories. Ukraine's president says Moscow is re-enacting the crimes of the Nazis. Let's return to our chief international correspondent, at least to said, who's in Dnipro. Yes, you join us in central eastern Ukraine. We're several hours drive from the main front lines in Donbass in eastern Ukraine, where the bulk of Russia's fighting forces and its firepower with no clear sense how and when it will end. We'll continue to provide our special coverage, not just from Dnipro, but with our correspondents across this region. But for now, I'll hand you back to the studio in London. Please, thanks once again, Lise Doucette there for us in Dnipro. Now to uh, other news, and Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has resigned after coming under increasing pressure from widespread anti-government protests because of a deepening economic crisis. Well, that was the latest there from Colombo. Stay with us because still to come on today's programme, as the United States is expected to exceed a million deaths from COVID shortly, we'll speak live to a professor of epidemiology in Massachusetts. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Now it's a milestone they expect to pass in the next few hours. A million people have died from COVID in the United States. Every state, every demographic affected, so many families devastated by a pandemic with its different waves and different variants. Well, bells will be rung at Washington's National Cathedral this evening once for every thousand Americans who've died from COVID-19. Now to UK politics, because the leader of the UK's main opposition party, Keir Starmer of Labour, has said he will resign if he's found to have broken COVID lockdown laws. Police are investigating whether he broke the rules last year. Sir Keir insists no rules were broken. The opposition leader has repeatedly, though, called for Boris Johnson to resign for breaking the law and receiving a fine. Rob Watson, uh, on the latest developments there in Westminster, uh, a really uh, interesting uh, last couple of hours it's been, and I'm sure there's going to be more reaction uh, in the coming hours. So we'll keep an eye across uh, that story and bring you more as it comes into us. Uh, I'm back with a full edition in half an hour's time and headlines here in just a moment or two. Don't go away.
This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrody Waller. On today's Global, Russia uses its annual Victory Day parade to justify its war in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin tries to tie the war in Ukraine to the fight against Nazi Germany and accuses NATO of being a threat to Russia. NATO began active military development of the territories adjacent to ours. This was an absolutely unacceptable threat, systematically created for us and right on our borders. On the ground in Ukraine, the struggle for the Donbass region shows the slow pace of any Russian advance. The Russians have been pounding these frontline positions for weeks now, but the big picture here in the Donbass is that the Kremlin's offensive has largely stalled. In Ukraine, President Zelensky marked the anniversary by comparing Vladimir Putin's war to that of the Nazis. Also in today's programme, the leader of Britain's main opposition party says he will resign if he's fined for breaking Covid rules over a gathering he attended during lockdown. If the police decide to issue me with a fixed penalty notice, I would, of course, do the right thing and step down. And as violence grips the Sri Lankan capital, the Prime Minister resigns. Will that be enough to end the protests? Welcome back to BBC News. Vladimir Putin has said Russian forces in Ukraine were fighting for the future of their motherland in his annual address marking victory over Nazi Germany in the Second World War. He said the invasion of Ukraine was necessary and had been provoked by the West. But he didn't make any major announcements related to the war or list any victories. Well, that was President Zelensky. Uh, let's talk now to our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, who's in central Ukraine in the city of Dnipro. Uh, and Lise, uh, fascinating to watch those events in Moscow, to listen to Vladimir Putin. It was a day of what was not said that was significant, I think. Lise Doucette uh, there in Dnipro. Thanks once again. Thank you. Well, the fighting, as Lisa was saying, continues unabated in Ukraine. After the failure of Russia's invasion around Kyiv, the Kremlin diverted its forces to what it called the liberation of the Donbass. Well, the former industrial heartland in the east of the country, that's where so much of the fighting is now focused. But efforts there to seize the region have stalled with reports of heavy Russian losses. The BBC's Andrew Harding has sent us this report. The latest from our teams in Ukraine. Now do stay with us because still to come on today's Global, could this man, the son of the former dictator Ferdinand Marcos, become the next president of the Philippines? Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Our main stories here at Moscow's Victory Day Parade. Vladimir Putin tries to justify his invasion of Ukraine and accuses NATO of being a threat to Russia. And five people have been killed amid protests in Sri Lanka, which has led to the Prime Minister's resignation today. Well, let's stay with that story because, as I was saying, Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has resigned after coming under increasing pressure from widespread anti-government protests because of a deepening economic crisis in that country. Straight to breaking news because Buckingham Palace has just announced that the Queen is to miss the state opening of Parliament and the Prince of Wales will read the Queen's speech on her behalf. That announcement just coming from Buckingham Palace, the state opening of Parliament uh, done by the monarch, that is uh, tomorrow. And uh, the statement from Buckingham Palace saying the Queen continues to experience episodic mobility problems and in consultation with her doctors has reluctantly decided she will not attend the state opening of Parliament uh, at Her Majesty's request and the agreement of the relevant authorities. The Prince of Wales will read the Queen's speech on Her Majesty's behalf with the Duke of Cambridge also in attendance. So that news just emerging from Buckingham Palace. Uh, I'll repeat the top line uh, because uh, the Queen is to miss the state opening of Parliament and the Prince of Wales will read the Queen's speech on her behalf. Uh, if we get more details on that, we'll obviously bring that to you. 
Now, the leader of the UK's main opposition party, Keir Starmer of Labour, has said he will resign if he's found to have broken COVID lockdown laws. Police are investigating whether he broke the rules last year. Now, let's turn to politics in the Philippines, because domestic news outlets there are reporting that the son of the country's late dictator, Ferdinand Marcos, is leading the presidential race by a substantial margin. But today's vote has been marred by nearly 2,000 malfunctioning counting machines, leaving many questioning the integrity of the the vote. Here's Howard Johnson. Just time to repeat the breaking news from Buckingham Palace. The Queen is to miss the state opening of Parliament tomorrow, citing mobility issues. The Prince of Wales will read the Queen's speech on her behalf. That's it from me. I'll see you at the same time tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hello again. We've got some fairly wet and windy weather pushing into parts of Norway and Sweden.